name is Ina Nelson. I was born here in Highland Park, two blocks away, and my parents were members in the Shoal. And in my growing up years, it was just another part of our life. I'm Sue Keel, and I came to Central Jersey because of Douglas College. In 1963, the only place a woman could go if you wanted to go to Rutgers was Douglas College. There I met Rabbi Julius and Pearl Funks of Blessed Memory and uh, they opened up the wide, wonderful Jewish world to me. When, uh, and they also told me about the Highland Park Temple. My father was very involved in the temple and on Sundays Whatever was going on, whether it was show business or a softball game in the park, I was always with my father wherever he went. And that's how I grew up in the temple. Friday night services were a very important part of my life. That was a punishment if I couldn't go to show on shop as if for any reason, if I was sick. It was just an extension of my life. After we got married in 1966, we asked uh, Rabbi Julius uh, how, uh, where he went when school was not in session. And he said, the Highland Park Conservative Temple and Center. And we came and we listened and we said, you know, this is, this is a really nice place. It was very comfortable living in town. Someone once asked me, did I ever experience anti-Semitism growing up? And I thought back to that and I had to say no, because we had family living here. I was an only child, but I, people used to talk about being an only child must have been lonely. I was never lonely. After I graduated high school, I decided to be a pharmacist. I went to first one year at Douglas College and then I transferred to Newark. And in my senior year, I met my husband, a blessed memory, Hilton Nelson. He was a senior at Fordham College of Pharmacy. We graduated and we were married shortly thereafter. I said to him, our whole life is in Holland Park. Our friends are in Holland Park. We belong to the Shull in Holland Park. And now you're working in Holland Park. All we're doing in North Brunswick is sleeping. <laughs> and I had it like, yeah. like this. And then we moved back in 1983. I became a French teacher at the junior high in East Brunswick. Yes, I did have another incarnation before being <laughs> a reference librarian uh, there. And then we bought homes in East Brunswick after I got the job as uh, a reference service manager at East Brunswick Public Library. Uh, and we too we were active in the Highland Park Temple, and we saw that a lot of our friends who were Shoma Shabbos, of course, we would have to find an opportunity to entertain uh, when it wasn't Shabbos or a Chag. And this kept on to the point where we said, this is ridiculous, we have to be in the community. When we bought our first house in 1967, was the beginning of um, my husband Hilton and myself and our children. And then I got involved in sisterhood. My mother was way ahead of me all the time because she was always involved in sisterhood. And it just became a path that you follow without realizing it. But the main goal was to keep the family in, within the Jewish community to give your children a Jewish education. And this becomes just an integral part of your life. We joined the synagogue in 1976. We were then living in East Brunswick. Uh, our daughter was born in 1972. But we saw that we wanted her to be with other young Jewish children. And we heard about this wonderful teacher that really, really the children loved to come to shul. And we, and then we said, oh, that sounds like something we'll want Marcia to be, our daughter Marcia, to be involved with. 
And sure enough, she became uh, part of Mara Marlene's class. And uh, it became a way of life. Every Shabbos morning, you know, I was a librarian. The library here was, uh, let's say, a little bit neglected in the 70s uh, there. They finally asked, Sue, is there something you can do for the library? And of course, that was a natural opening. Also, when we had, we had all of these expos and some research had to be done, it was a part of both Brian and I. He loved to research everything uh, there. So we, we were a team in that, and we became very involved with uh, most of the expos from uh, the late 70s to, uh, I guess it was through the 1990s. In our early years, Professionally, both Hilton and I are pharmacists. We had a store. And with your own business, it is a very time-consuming process. Eventually, Hilton, we sold the business. Hilton worked in East Brunswick. And that's when we started becoming more involved in the temple as the children were getting older. Then he came to work for Donald Weist, who owned drug fair in Holland Park. So besides being involved in the temple, we had friends, we were involved. <clears throat> he developed a relationship with the bigger Jewish community. And even people who weren't so active in the temple got to know him in another way. He became an integral part of both the temple and the, the Jewish community. One of the things that happened when he was working at drug fair there was a growing concern about kashrut for drugs. And certain drugs had OUs on them, talking about vitamins, things people, not only prescription drugs, but over-the-counter drugs. And then this evolved as the Jewish community grew into Pesach. And he became a Pesach consultant of sorts for the entire Jewish community, which eventually led to after he passed away, we dedicate a Pesach bulletin in his memory because this was such a love and a concern on his part. While I was working full time, I would uh, take on more committee responsibility in the shul, uh, usually with sisterhood committees in there for their major fundraisers, whether it be the Purim, project or the um, uh, the fashion show and uh, so that that was my role during the years while I was uh, working full-time uh, Brian was a part of a lot of projects that I was involved in because he had this wonderful uh, very uh, orderly mind and when he saw that we were having trouble making roots for the forum project he came up, he took the whole project, uh, that part of the project over and made sure that we had roots that made sense and that people could complete before the end of Purim that evening. <laughs> I never stopped being involved in Rutgers Hill Ale since 1963 when I entered as a freshman uh, there. Uh, part of the reason I ended up in Highland Park in particular was because of the, uh, the funks of blessed memory. They made sure I kept involved for her fundraising for Rutgers Hillel through developing an alumni association. I, along with other local alums, started up this association. Right. After retirement, that's when I went really all out with my volunteer activities. Yeah. I worked up my ranks in the uh, sisterhood, became president in 2006. It was a challenge to be president in a falling apart, why, but thank God we had a building, you know, something over our head. But I think we managed to do everything because we, were, we worked together. We all worked together after the fire. Everybody knew that without working together, we wouldn't, make, we wouldn't be able to make it, period. As the years went by, um, in 1980, 
Rabbi Hilzenrath went on sabbatical to Israel for a year. And there was always a visitation on somebody's part in the hospital to someone who was sick. But it became an organized group under the leadership of Dr. Eva Stahl of Blessed Memory. It became a formalized group where people were trained to go visit in the hospitals, patients who needed visitation. And over the years, this evolved to a outreach, Bikur Cholim Chesed, where we not only reach out to people in the hospital, but people at home, whether they need a ride to a doctor or they need assistance with shopping. It's just a connection to the people who physically can't always get to the temple. And it could be just a friendly phone call. Now that we have uh, two Torah reading services in the temple every Shabbos, there is a group that meets in the sanctuary and another group meets in the Beit Midrash. We alternate each week. One week it's egalitarian in the main sanctuary and then and yeah. the other week it's the Moreshet okay. group. I became one of the coordinators of the Torah readers for the Moreshet Minyan. And over the years also, on Shabbos morning, especially after we moved into this new building, we developed a Shabbos morning greeter program where someone is in the lobby, not only to greet our members, new guests coming into the building, um, and just to make them feel welcome, as you would as someone comes into your home. <laughs> and then it evolved that I became part of the seating committee. It's a big committee, it's only two people. <laughs> um, which is a challenge because some people like to sit in the same seat and some people want to change their seats. <laughs> From generation to generation, my children, Marsha and Phil Goldwasser, my grandchildren, Avi, Noam, and Shana Goldwasser are all involved in this shul. So obviously, I hope that we remain as vibrant as, as we are now and have been in the past. From my past experience, which is my life, I would hope that the future of the Highland Park Shul, the temple, is so entwined in the community that families will continue to gravitate to Holland Park and nurture each other and be part of this greater Jewish community. You say family. We're all extended family in one way because you develop relationships by working on expos, by working on committees, by serving on the board. You get to know people and that's how you become friends. And I hope the temple's future is bright. <laughs> and we're off to Israel to help yes, Israel celebrate, too. Yes, yes, the next picture of Sue and I together will be uh, on your phones from Jerusalem. <laughs> <laughs> Shabbat Shalom.